<laughs> Donny, what is the match you are most proud of and had the most fun participating in? Oh, Lordy. I, I think just on surface, the off-the-cuff remark would be uh, the match in Pittsburgh where, uh, as I said earlier about the franchise, there would have been a great babyface run at the end. I think the Pittsburgh pay-per-view, the November to November 97, gave a glimpse into that. I wasn't wrestling any different than I would have in any match prior to that against any babyface. Uh, th that character was still the same. The difference was those 5,000 fans had watched this kid <clears throat> break into wrestling, go to the UWF, earn his first title, go to the NWA. You know, each they they built they were building blocks in my career. Those fans had all watched me. Many of them friends and family and neighbors and uh, residents of the same area, and came there. And then they, this was the the capital the capitalization of all that, like this is going to be the payoff to all that. The, the, all those years, those fans had put into watching this guy uh, now gets to go there. And in the inverse universe, the, the, the guy that is despised in ECW is suddenly loved here in Pittsburgh, respected here in Pittsburgh, but he's getting the snot kicked out of him. When you see, and again, I give credit all to Bammer in this. When you see Bammer take that final belly to belly through the, through the chairs and things, and the, the the crowd still doesn't pop. The part of them pop, but it's on the three count when the crowd erupts, uh, because that was the the payoff of like that point, 13, 14, 15 years of watching this snot nosed kid grow up in the business. Uh, so proud of that. Proud that we delivered uh, both for the pay per view and for the hometown. But I, I think if you ask me, my best match. Uh, meaning where I was most comfortable in my skin because uh, I would obsess over this stuff. Uh, I had a match with just incredible uh, not long before I left and uh, and then PJ worked his butt off and we had a great match in the ECW arena. Uh, and he's showing for me, He's exposing sides of the franchise character that I'd never seen, that the fans had never seen. Me pressing him and throwing him into the the upside down railing, and and you know things like that you'd never seen the franchise do before. Uh, it was a completely inverted view of the franchise, uh, not in his hometown, in this town where he was so despised, and PJ going in there and just delivering the goods. <clears throat> it was clear to me that PJ was reaching out to take the ring to show that he is the next guy. He's the heel. And uh, for me in my mindset, I remember being completely at ease in that match, that match. There was, nah, there was none of that, you know, nausea or, you know, butterflies before the match. It was like, okay, let's go out and do it. Boom. Did it Went out and had fun completely at ease the, the entire time in the match. And, you know, PJ really working hard angle would be Pitbull too. Um, he had grown so trusting of me uh, that that put me at ease. And so like, if you you watch closely as he's pressing me over his head, cause he was just so freaking strong, pressed me over his head. And as he's throwing me, I'm upside down and I yell at him, beat your chest. And he'd start beating his chest. Uh, it was just, as I look back at it in my memory, it was a very comfortable time for that character because he trusted me. And his trust in me made me feel comfortable working with him and allowed my, it freed my brain up to think so I could think for the two of us. And, uh, and then the single match again, PJ. So, uh, and then if like favorite match, uh, as far as just like, you know, overarching type of like the, the fondest memory of, uh, is any of the matches with Terry Funk, because I learned so much from him. And like I said earlier, it was like going from, you know, this uh, baby face to learning how to really be a despisable heel. And, you know, I was so blessed that I had someone like Terry Funk to work with, to learn from. And, uh, you know, I often get the credit in ECW for being the mouthpiece. But a lot of what became the, the, the mentality of ECW came straight from Terry Funk. He was, he was the leader of that. And I got to be the mouthpiece of that. So, uh, uh, I, you know, it's all the way up to the end. It's, it's rare to hear somebody, what, 12, 13 years into a career 
uh, saying, you know, you know, bowing down how blessed I was to work with somebody like that. Uh, and that really was Terry Funk. I mean, it was, uh, what a learning experience. The end of my entire career I had those great, great turns and those great opportunities at every turn in my, at every critical juncture of my career.